Welcome to Norton Summit, Adelaide, Australia. Here we are climbing up. This is the start of the Norton Summit. This would be one of the Saturday morning TTs. And we're just cruising up the hill. I'm just making sure of the... Uh, yep, that's me. Just checking to make sure the camera was working as I do the OCD. Here on the right here is uh, my son, Brooke, from Prank Nation. And uh, we're still cruising up the hill here. Saturday morning bunch. We have a local... Uh, not a local, but we have a BMC rider... I think it's Cola, who was staying in Adelaide at the time, a uh, local guy. So it was good to have some uh, pro tour team uh, vibe in the bunch. So we're cruising up. This would probably be April. Uh, you can see it's still a warm morning. That's probably, she's probably, uh, it's probably March. Actually, it could even be December. I don't even fucking know. Either way, it's beautiful conditions for training. You can see that most of us are wearing uh, minimal clothing. And you look, just look at this BMC, look at the BMC ride, look at the, you know, the cadence is always good. You know, if, if in doubt about cadence, look to the pros. When the pros are going full gas, then that's a good sign of cadence. It's very smooth pedaling action. Very smooth pedaling action. So I'm sitting here at the back of the bunch, and I'm just going to go around. Anyone who gets popped off the back, I just go around. Um, so no judgment, no judgment. This is the first hairpin coming up. How to ride in the bunch. Ideally, if I was uh, a weaker climber, I'd probably want to be up the front. Not at the front, but up the front. That way, if someone drops a wheel, I don't have to go around them. Uh, and that way, if I do drop wheels, I can drop wheels through the bunch. And then that way, I'm conserving energy. Will people will use more energy to go around me? Yes, but if you're not the best climber, you're better off being in the front five. And that way, you can just... If you drop wheels, you can just sort of go through the bunch a bit and then hopefully stay on over the top. Depends on how steep the climb is. But if you're a, you know, not if climbing's not your strongest, you definitely don't want to be last wheel because it's just not where you want to be. Because if as soon as you drop the wheel, you drop the, you drop, you drop the bunch. At least if you're up the front and top five, if you drop the wheel, you're still in the bunch. Does that, if that make sense? So you're better off being up the front, not at the front, but up the front if your climbing is not your forte, or if you're just struggling on that day. Because everyone has struggles. Everyone maybe get dehydrated, or you you're running out of carbs, you're running out of muscle glycogen, and you're just struggling to maintain contact. But look at the you can see the BMC rider here just smooth. Your legs are basically pistons, your pistons, and you want to have the rev about 80 to 100. And if you're doing a sprint, you want to be like at least 130 to get the power. The higher the power, the higher the cadence is going to be. So we're just putting along here. So we're probably doing like sub 15 minute pace, maybe even sub 14 that day. You see the rider in front has the leg covers on and the arm covers. I think that's too much clothing to be riding with up a hill. I find you, know, you get a bit too hot. That's me personally. But then again, maybe this rider just came from down the top of the hill and it was cold, so it's hard to, hard to make a judgment. But just in general, you don't see me wearing much clothing when I'm going up a hill because it's quite easy to overheat. And if you overheat, you dehydrate and your blood plasma will drop off and when your blood plasma drops off so does your performance so I, I recommend wear minimal clothing just enough clothing that you don't get arrested but just enough clothing that you don't you know you're not cold but you also don't overheat and only with experience and doing the miles in all different types of climates etc will you work out what works for you so even in the pro peloton some guys really layer up and some guys don't I, de I generally do well in the cold I don't like the cold, but I, I do well in it, as long as I have uh, something to cover my fingers, some gloves, and maybe some booties, some booties over the feet, which are good if you're in Australia right now and it's winter time, then the booties are good, they may have you know, neoprene material or uh, you know, some sort of nylonish material where it can keep the, the, the warmth in, especially if it starts raining and you're descending and it's maybe 5 degrees or 10 degrees Celsius. If it's under 12, if it's under 10 degrees, then I'll pull my booties out. I'll definitely pull the booties out. If it's under 10 degrees, I pull my gloves, my, my full finger gloves out. And uh, if it's raining, I wear a Gore-Tex jacket and also have fenders on my bike. The best fenders I like are called Crud Road Racer. That's C-U-R-D Road Racer. Not sponsored. Uh, they have sent me out some, though, so maybe technically sponsored, but not sponsored. Just Let's just forget I just mentioned that. But the Crud Road Racer, a uh, lightweight fender, and they work really good on 99% of bikes out there. And you can sort of customise them if they don't fit or whatever. If you're running 25mm tyres or less, they work. If you're running bigger tyres than 25, then you may have an issue with fenders. Um, or you, if your tyres are that big, then you probably have to run a special fender, which is fine. Let me just have a quick yawn. 
we're going back. This is the first hairpin in Norton Summit. This is around the five minute mark. We hit this. If you're going under five minutes, then you're going to go under 13. So we're doing it. This is yeah, this is probably going to be under sub 14 pace. So we're on 513 now. Um, and the pace is it's definitely hot. It's not full gas. You can tell it's not full gas because we're still too abreast. When the pay, when it goes full gas, it gets strung out in a line. That's how you know any any race is full gas is when it's strung out in this long, thin string of a line. That's when you know it's full gas. And now the pace is picking up a bit. You can see riders starting to drop off the back there because it kicks up the gradient kicks up. So it's a bit of a change in power there. I don't have any power metrics on this ride, sorry. So you just have to believe me. But you can see the riders now. If you're not feeling the, the vibe, this is where people are going to go off the back a bit. Now, it can be, you can see the cadence is very important. If you get caught now in cadence, if your cadence is low, then you're going to just produce more metabolic waste product for the same given wattage. Dr. Ferrari popularized the cadence with Lance Armstrong. He's basically uh, theorized and provided proof of concept that the higher the torque, the more the metabolic fatigue. So one way to have the power, but the lower the torque, is to increase the cadence. Right? So if the cadence is around 80 or 90, then you're going to have a less, or sorry, 80 to 100, you're going to have less fatigue metabolites if you're riding at you know, certain wattage. So that's why you can see the riders here, the cadence is pretty good now. Um, you just got to be. You see these two riders here, quite slight guys. Yeah. No yawn. And I'm I'm dead last basically I'm dead last so with the BMC rider had had enough early on, and now it's, look at it single file now it's single file now, now now the pace is on, now the pace is on. Right so as soon as you see it strung like that and then you see the gap starting to open then, that's when now we now we got to focus now we have got to lock it in, and now I'm going to move up a bit, I'm going to move up a bit. There's a gap open there, so there you go. And now I'm waiting for the rider to close the gap. I should have closed it quicker because that's a big gap now. I should have not waited for so long. And now there's a gap. See the gap? There's two gaps there. There's a gap in front of this rider here, and there's another gap coming open. So now it's really getting hot. Will we get back on? I can't remember if I got back on this this ride. I can't even remember. So look at that. There's two gaps. There's a front group right now. There's a front group of four ride riders, and we're closing the gap. So that someone has attacked. You know, now they're out the saddle. So it's getting hot. It's probably down at 500 watts now. Uh, you can see also at this speed to the rider's uh, GLA, the, the vest is open, so they're losing a bit of resistance there with the wind because it's flapping a bit and we're going pretty fast. And my son Brook there, I told him to get off his bike and get a job. He's got popped. So the gap is open up. We will get back on. It's a big gap, isn't it? They're fucking motoring down on, up ahead. So that's important to be up the front as well because then you can see when the brakes happen. So I was sitting in the back just sort of diddling my thumbs, talking too much, and then boom, the gap opened up. They're really motoring, aren't they? Ooh, looks like there's another gap off the front. So right off the front of that one. So yeah, it's really getting hot now. And we're eight minutes in. So the legs are really starting to sizzle. They're really starting to sizzle. And these riders, they're not from their group, they're from elsewhere. So Adelaide's a very popular place. Will we get back on? I can't, I can't even remember, did we get back on the bunch here? Or was, was, this a, was this an example of those who hesitate and masturbate and we just we missed the gap because we waited too long? That's an example of where I wasn't paying attention. So now I'm sort of sitting behind this rider. I'm, probably, I'm saving a bit of watts because they're, we're going, we're hooking along. This rider on the red bike, he's, he's fit. He's got really good form. He's, he's pedaling really well. His cadence is like textbook. He's pedaling like a pro. And, oh, we're back on. We are back on. We are back on, so it looks like they slowed up a little bit. Is there still a group in front? So it looks like there was, this, there was a we either sped up or they slowed down or whatever. But it's still strung out, still strung out, still, still single file. So it looks like the pace is still on. But uh, this is a good example of just as soon as the gap opens up, you got you got to hit it straight away. Now, let's see what's going to happen here. Let's see what's going to happen here. You can see the rider here, the yellow socks. Cadence a bit low. But now that rider's a lot faster. His cadence has come up in the last year or two. His cadence is quite high, and he's, he's, he's ripping it up. He's quite a force, and he's lost a bit of weight as well. Um, yeah, so we've, we've got everyone here. It's one, two, three, four, it's five, six of us left. What's going to happen now? What's going to happen now? So the pace is still good because we're in single file. It looks like it's eased off a bit because I'm sitting to the left. 
If I was really hurting, I'd be sort of off the back a little bit. And this is the last stretch of North Summit. Oh, join. <laughs> it is great that every Saturday or every Thursday or every Tuesday morning, there's highly motivated individuals like these guys and girls who are out there willing to just put it on the line up Norton Summit and or Deutsche Tech, anywhere in the world, there's this highly motivated individual. So I'd recommend find those highly motivated individuals and hit, hit the hills with them. And it's very safe going up a hill with a bunch. Here we go again. Now it's going on. Now it's going on. It's picking up again. See, I'm, I'm suffering right now. The gap. Oh, here we go. Doing right, it's going to get dropped. Oh, look at that. Acceleration. See, I'll, I, yeah. Hes I hesitated massively there, and I don't think I'm going to get back on that one. That was a big, that was like probably 800 watt, watt acceleration, and I'm cooking. So now I'm going to jump on these guys' wheels, and hopefully they can drag me up. Drag me up. I definitely hesitated there. You've got to get on straight away, Duran Otter. Straight away. So luckily I've got these two lads, and they're going to hopefully bring me back. If I can, if I can just hold their wheel, they'll bring me back. Because I know this guy here, the Leggins, he's a good climber, so I know I, I have trust in him that he will get across. So I'm just biting my stem here, holding on. Well, that, was, that, was a, that was a pretty powerful acceleration, wasn't it? Again, example, you just got to get the wheel as soon as it goes. You've got to get on it. Otherwise, you, you miss, the, miss the brake. What happens here? This is suspenseful, isn't it? Suspense. Does Doon Rider get dropped again? I think I, I don't think... I, I, don't, I don't think... Here we go. Here we go. Now, I've got to get on it straight away. I'm, oh, I'm lagging. Oh, no, no. I'm lagging. I must, I, something must be happening that day. I just didn't have the gas. Didn't have the gas. It's a wave there from the, the ladies. Yeah, what's going on, Duran Rider? That's a bad move. I should have gotten the wheel straight away. What's going on? I'm not sure. Not enough carbs that day, but... We can see these these guys are all like national level uh, road riders, and he's riding across there. He's bridging the gap by himself, and they are Audi. They are Audi. So it definitely uh, wasn't having the best day that day. But it's it a good break now. You see, I can look back now. I can see where I could have improved. Is get the wheel straight away, no matter what. You just get that wheel straight away, and those riders are out of there. That was a massive acceleration. So lesson learned for this video is if, the, if you're going to go with it, you have to go with it 100%. You can't let the gap open. If you let the gap open, then see you later. Sayonara. Lights out. TKO. So that's an example there that you just gotta, I've got to hold that wheel no matter what. Be focused on the goal. Hold the wheel. Because I'm still holding the right wattages here, but nah, that's not good enough. Do it on. You've got to hold that wheel. Got to hold that wheel. So the big acceleration in the end and uh, I just couldn't match it. I just could not match it. Didn't have enough power to accelerate along. Doing right against dropped on Norton Summit. Done. This is a climb where as well, if you don't, on a steeper climb, you don't need the draft, you know, but on this, this Norton Summit, it's a fast climb, you have to hold the wheel. If you don't hold the wheel, you're gonna lose a lot of more time because it is a very fast climb and it, and it does suit drafting. So there you go, on the fast climbs, you definitely gotta hold the wheel. Steeper climb, not so as important, because the drafting effect doesn't really matter as much. But if you're trying to catch a guy of you know, four or five riders and they're swapping off turns and it's a fast climb, your chances are you're going to catch them because they're going to have that aero advantage on you, the single rider. But it was a good time. So it wasn't even, it wasn't even that fast. It was 13.40, something like that. You know, sub 14. Must have had a bad day that day. Not sure what was going down. Because uh, that minute off my PR. But a very good training. And uh, thanks to all the hitters out the day and all the people out there who were having a crack. Saturday morning fun. Norton Summer Adelaide. Leave your questions down below. Moral of the story, get the wheel. As soon as it comes past, you've got to get the wheel. Get on it straight away. Otherwise, you miss the draft and you're going to lose time. And you're going to get dropped like doing what I did on this day. On this day of uh, Norton Summitness. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments and questions down below. Cab the fuck up and uh, stay safe. See ya.